everyone, I'm Ashley Camrath. Welcome to The Concrete Show. The advantages of using concrete in building and remodeling are endless. Concrete is safe, sustainable, and beautiful. Now, over the next half hour, we'll show you exactly what we mean as concrete becomes the centerpiece of this new home. The Concrete Show is brought to you by Specialty Concrete Products, the Indiana Soybean Alliance, VerticalArtisans.com, ConcreteMystique.com, and BestBuiltBarbecueIslands.com. As George and Nancy Siegel are building their new home, they're facing a lot of challenges. One of the biggest, as you can see when you look around this backyard, there are a lot of rocks. So now that it's time to put in the pool deck, they need to find a surface that not only looks great, but also has the flexibility to blend in and complement the natural look that's already here. When you see this many rocks in a backyard, just doing a pool deck with a tired old pebble finish doesn't seem like enough. That's where concrete came into play. Using concrete back here allowed the homeowner to pick a surface that blends in with the rest of the backyard. Every surface has its challenges, and on this job, it's getting access to where the deck is going to go. The crew had to create a way to get the concrete trucks in, which included bringing in a large pump truck to get the concrete the rest of the way to the backyard. After that, they started pouring. Timing is crucial on a job like this. Once the concrete is placed, we have to make sure that the color hardener is evenly trialed in. And after that, we throw a release agent that is a secondary color then we place our texture mats on the wet concrete. And what I like about Stampmaster is their texture is incredible. It's uh, about as realistic as you can get. The mats they used are from Stampmaster, a company that specializes in creating stamps that ultimately make the concrete look so much like real stone. What I like about Stampmaster is the people at Stampmaster used to be contractors. So they have first-hand knowledge on how to make the tools. And what I mean by that is they're strong, they're tough, they're durable, they last, um, which is important to contractors. The final step is applying the sealer from Specialty Concrete Products that will keep this deck looking great for years. When construction began on this home, the builder completely ignored what to do with the fireplace. Now, Nancy Siegel joins me. Nancy, what was your goal with the fireplace? Well, this room is the great room. It's where everybody hangs out. It's right next to the kitchen. It's right next to the entrance. And what was the significance of having such a unique piece in this room? Since this house sits on rock, it's surrounded by rock, and the pool is a rock wall, we wanted to incorporate and bring the outside in. So what do you think of the finished product? Ashley, I think it's amazing. Anybody that comes here assumes that these are rocks from outside. Absolutely. Thanks, Nancy. Thank you. The man behind this amazing fireplace is Nathan Giffen of VerticalArtisans.com. Now, Nathan's specialty is the same as what's in his name. He's a vertical concrete genius. So when it came time to design and build this fireplace, this was one project he knew just how to tackle. Hi, I'm Nathan Giffen from VerticalArtisans.com, and I'm building a fireplace with hand-carved vertical decorative concrete. Okay, the first thing that, that I'm doing is I'm preparing the substrate, and we do that by making sure that we have everything plasticed off to protect the surrounding environment. The next step I'm doing is I'm applying spider lath, which is a fiberglass lath that replaces metal lath, adds strength to the concrete, and is a lot safer than metal lath as well. You might ask yourself, how is vertical decorative concrete going to integrate with the rest of the decor of the home, the wood floors and the plastered walls or the faux finishes? Concrete is so versatile that you can change the scope of this and the size of what you're working with. You can also change the color and it can blend seamlessly into the environment. The next step that I'm going to do is I'm going to take the vertical decorative concrete and I'm going to apply it with my hand onto the lath. The next step is trial smooth. Then we come back with what's called a, sc a scarifier and we just rake it right across and create a very rough substrate for our next coat. Now that our scratch coat is completely dry, the next process is the application of the carving coat. 
And that's the coat that's the most fun because that's where a professional or an artist like myself gets to really just express himself. Once we've rubbed in that first coat, then we take what's called a hawk and trowel, and we basically just hawk and trowel another thicker layer right on top of the layer that we just did, and we smooth it as we go. There's one thing about creating stone uh, designs, and that is uh, you don't want four-way intersections. You don't, want a, you don't want an intersection that looks like this, where you have an X or a four-way stop sign. The right way for stone layout from a mason's point of view is to have three intersections instead of four. After our design has been laid out, then we get to the texturization phase and we texture our, what we're doing. And we basically do that with a series of tools. There's various rollers, there's various trowels. All of these tools are available in the industry. And this is just basically while the material is still wet, you just texturize to your desire. Now that we're completed with the upper part of the fireplace, we're going to move to the mantle and to the hearth and deal with some of the challenges that we find there. The mantle is one of the more dramatic pieces of the fireplace. And for that, we add a lot of extra relief, a lot more detail and a lot more dimension from the face and from the side. The hearth is completely different. We use bigger stones to accomplish a sense of support and foundation and that's important because we don't need a lot of little stones on the hearth we want to have strength at the base of the fireplace the overall fireplace is a complete illusion so to create strength in, the, in this illusion we have a lot of corner stones or bulky stones that are on the base and that adds for visual strength it, there is no physical strength because this is nothing more than a facade or a skin of stone that's over our substrates. Now that our rock wall is finished being carved, now we move on to the colorization process. Right now what I'm doing is just adding color to random stones. I'm trying to space out random colors. I don't want two colors to really be too close together, so I'm just starting to put my what I call my base coats down. We have finished the fireplace. It matches the decor perfectly. The client is happy, it's a durable and strong product, and we hope that you consider hand-carved vertical decorative concrete on your next project. Building backyard barbecues has become a huge business, and they're expensive. But there's a company in Arizona that's looking to change all that. Now, not only is their barbecue island line affordable, they're easy to put together, have a unique look, and are extremely lightweight. How light? Would you believe they're made of styrofoam? What we've created is a barbecue island that is designed out of a template of polystyrene foam, construction grade polystyrene foam. And what we're able to do is to go ahead and assemble the island in a very short period of time and then be able to go ahead and custom finish it to whatever grill, hardware, and accessories that you have for your custom island. After laying out and assembling all the pieces, a hot wire cutter is used to create access for the gas line. All the pieces are glued together and risers are installed on the bottom of the unit. Then cutouts are made for the door, grill, and countertop. So what we've been able to do is to take what is the best approach. In construction, architectural foam has been used for years. And what we have is a custom template here that we're able to go ahead, put together very quickly, and then finish with two things. One, a uh, fire rated texture that has over 3,000 PSI strength. So it's very durable, long lasting, and then on top of that, the finish that we put over that texture will be to complement the rest of your outdoor decor. Now it's time to give the exterior the look the homeowner is trying to achieve. In the case of this yard, more rocks. To get that look, contractor Wes Vollmer uses Walt's tools. What I love about these tools is they are made from the actual product that we are trying to simulate. The wood texture mat is actually made from a mold off of real wood. The rock texture mat is also made off of real rock. There are such a variety of tools here that we can make it look like anything. Wes and his crew are using a product called Magnumcrete and carve concrete rocks of various sizes before the product dries. The guys then color the rocks to match the look of the yard. As you can see, the barbecue's in place, the smoker's in place. This is gonna be for entertainment and enjoyment for years to come. 
The Concrete Show is brought to you by Specialty Concrete Products, the Indiana Soybean Alliance, VerticalArtisans.com, ConcreteMystique.com, and BestBuiltBarbecueIslands.com. When contractors sit and reminisce about the good old days, he was actually there. When doctors talk about how four out of their five patients do something, he's the fifth. When he walks onto a job site, even undocumented workers insist on being paid by check. He's the most experienced contractor in the world. I don't always carve vertical concrete, but when I do, I use magnetry. Stay vertical, my friends. The pool you saw featured in the San Antonio episode of The Concrete Show was designed and built by Pristine Pools. Quality, service, and creativity. Before you build your pool, make sure to check out Pristine Pools. Every year it's amazing to see the latest and greatest in ways to do concrete work. Well, there's a man here in San Antonio that's always raising the bar on creative ways to do things. One of his latest creations is staining concrete faster and easier than you might think. Hi, my name is Vincent Villegas and I'm with Creative Colors Concrete Dye. And my company has a product that makes staining concrete floors so easy, it's much easier than an acid stain. Before we start any project, it's very important that you clean the floor. The floor must be completely free of any paint, any dirt, oils, anything that will harm the penetration of the dye into the concrete. Because the product is carried by acetone, it evaporates very quickly. As you can see, I'm already able to step on it, and there's no problem. Once the dye has been applied, now you begin the second step. You get a floor machine with a white buffing pad, and just simply buff your floor to release some of the uh, residue that stays on top. Now the final step is to go ahead and apply the sealer. This step is very important because what happens is if you don't seal it, you'll be able to walk off the color. Once the sealer is applied, it takes about 24 hours for it to dry. Overnight, you know, the next day you can come in and put a second coat if necessary. Once the top coat has been applied, maintenance is very easy. All you need to do is just dust it or apply a little bit of water to a damp mop and just go right over it. There's no need for any harsh chemicals because the durability is gonna be absolutely amazing. Well, the project is finished. One of the big benefits of having a floor like this is that you're gonna have a floor that's gonna be so easy to maintain and you're not gonna have any of the problems that are associated with wood or tile. Depending on what part of the country you live in, there are certain types of concrete you're likely to use. If you live in an area that gets a fair amount of rain, there's a surface you should really take a look at for your driveway. It's called pervious concrete and when water hits it, it's now you see it, now you don't. Here's Tracy Gallagher. Water passing right through concrete? Sounds like something David Copperfield might use in one of his shows. Yet this is no master illusion, it's concrete. Over 50 years ago, uh, Pervious was developed in Europe for a specific use and they found that it has insulated properties but more importantly, it's very useful in being able to pass water through it and filter the water on the way. One of the great features about pervious concrete is what it can mean to people who live in an area where water can be an issue. Pervious concrete, the number one thing I think people should remember is if there is an issue with water, um, possibly because the house is sitting at a level so close to the level of the road you really can't get the proper runoff, pervious concrete is a good idea. If they're ecologically minded and they'd like to put a retention tank in and capture the water that goes through the pervious already filtered, they can reuse that water to, to water their yards or their flowers or anything else. Every year professionals in the concrete industry get together in Las Vegas for the World of Concrete show. And every year, Pervious is playing a bigger role. At this year's event, we got to see firsthand the latest equipment being used to get the job done right. It's a great service to use around hot tubs and swimming pools because of the fact no water means no slipping. And Miller says there are even more ways Pervious can make you safer. Older couple, for instance, I've done their patio for them, and uh, they make several trips to the doctor's office. With the pervious patio and step out front on their way to their car, there's no slippage. Water runs through it, it won't have a chance to freeze on top of it, and they're safer that way. And the old days of not wanting pervious because you couldn't color and stamp it are over. 
In addition to now being able to stamp a variety of patterns, Miller says the sky's the limit on colors. Any color can be put in pervious concrete. Uh, if it's available in the ready-mix market for integral color, it could be done on a topical. There's, there's no limit to what color pervious concrete can be. No longer the ugly stepchild of the concrete industry, Pervious has reached the point that you need to consider using it on your next project. Honestly, everybody should consider Pervious if they've got some objectives in mind. That is, being green, something we all love to do is hug a tree, but it also makes very good sense for developers to, if in effect, multitask for the use of their land space. You build the detention basin and the parking in the same land space in a much more appealing scenario and more effective in separating contaminants and it mitigates those contaminants and captures them on site. Many times the driveway gets treated as an afterthought on a project, but this is an area that if done right can really complement the home and make it stand out. On this project, Bravo Contracting using tools and materials from specialty concrete products really set out to make this driveway something special. There are a number of advantages to using concrete on your driveway. The advantage of using decorative concrete over washed aggregate and broom finish is the endless possibilities of stamping it, incorporating different colors and staining and different designs to create a beautiful and unique driveway that you won't see anywhere else. Before the driveway is poured, it needs to be properly formed. To make it structurally sound, a number of turndown beams were needed, as well as creating expansion joints along the driveway to help prevent cracking. Bravo and his crew plan to pour and stamp the entire driveway in one day, so timing is critical to success. The concrete can flash on us. We, can, we might not be able to get all the stamps. One thing that could create a problem would be not being able to get a good impression or stamp on the concrete before it sets up on us. We're using a SCP specialty concrete products. This is an Appalachian stone. It's a very nice texture stamp on it. It's got a lot of texture on it. Random stone pattern on it with very nice sprout joints on it. The stamps and color for this job are from specialty concrete products in South Carolina. The owner, Clyde Cobb, learned from firsthand experience how to create products that get the job done. The great thing about Stamp Master tools is our interlocking ability to interlock on an incline like this to keep the tools from sliding down the slope on the wet concrete. Clyde's success doesn't come from just selling products, he's also there to support the crews in the field using them. You know, especially concrete products, one of the things we pride ourselves on is our level of technical support. When you call us, you're talking to a live person that can really get you through the situation you're in. In fact, we have contractors from other companies call us. Despite the heat and the amount of work they had to do all in one day, Bravo's crew got it done. A few days later, they were back doing some touch-ups and sealing the driveway. The end result? A unique, beautiful-looking driveway that complements the house perfectly. Earlier in the program, we saw some of Nathan Giffen's amazing vertical concrete work. Well, Nathan has something else to show us. A technique he's developed to create the look of exposed stone on walls in a fraction of the time it used to take. Every texture every brings more interest into the room. So each texture that you can bring in, you've just added another dimension to the room. Sandra Patterson and her design partner, Mary Lynn Kilday, were looking for something different to put on the powder room walls. So they were excited to find Nathan's exposed stone technique and how easy it was to put together. The product that we're working with today is called Speco Rock, and that's the product that we're going to be using for our molds. It's a gypsum-based concrete that really sets off fast, but we like that because that allows us to demold and use our pieces rather quickly. Creating the stones is as simple as mixing up your material and pouring it in the special molds Nathan has created. Each of the pieces that are in this exposed stone mold set serves a purpose. There's a large corner, a small corner, a very large side piece, two medium pieces and two small pieces. The pieces are all interchangeable, and Nathan points out you don't put that many on the wall. In fact, it's more plaster than stone. The stone is just part of the overall effect. 15 minutes after pouring the molds, they are hardened and ready to come out. The next step is applying colors to the stones to create the look you want to see up on your walls. 
Each section or group of stones gets glued and screwed into the wall. Nathan then puts a bonding agent on the wall and it's time for the plaster. Once the wall's been done, the plasterer lifts the plaster slightly over the rock. This exposes the stone and gives the appearance of it breaking out. And the ultimate test on any project, what does Nancy the homeowner think of the exposed stone? Wow, this looks incredible. You can learn more about Nathan's exposed stone business in a box through a link on our website, theconcreteshow.com. When contractors sit and reminisce about the good old days, he was actually there. When doctors talk about how four out of their five patients do something, he's the fifth. When he walks onto a job site, even undocumented workers insist on being paid by check. He's the most experienced contractor in the world. I don't always carve vertical concrete, but when I do, I use magnetry. Stay vertical, my friends. If you have a concrete slab that the builder or previous homeowner didn't take good care of, you might want to consider metallic epoxy. Now this allows you to not only cover up something you don't like, but it allows you to add something you'll love. Wes Vollmer is the concrete contractor on this project. Now Wes, tell me, what did you do to get this floor ready? Well, we had a uh, low speed rotary buffer and basically what that does is we, we took that machine and went over the whole entire floor to rough it up. So when we put the metallic epoxy on it, it would adhere to it. So what makes it so shiny? Well, it's a, it's a two part uh, urethane, which is a, about the best material you can get, an A and a B component. Um, when you mix those two components together, you have a limited time to put them down, but that's the benefit of it is it is super shiny and super hard and it will stay that way. Well, it looks great. Tell me about the maintenance on a floor like this. It's about as low maintenance as you can get. Um, periodically, damp mop it, dust mop it, that's about it. Thanks, Wes. The Concrete Show is brought to you by Specialty Concrete Products, the Indiana Soybean Alliance, VerticalArtisans.com, ConcreteMystique.com, and BestBuiltBarbecueIslands.com. The pool you saw featured in the San Antonio episode of The Concrete Show was designed and built by Pristine Pools, quality, service, and creativity. Before you build your pool, make sure to check out Pristine Pools. The garage floor is something that doesn't always get a lot of thought. In fact, in many cases, the home buyer just takes what the builder leaves behind. But it doesn't have to be that way. In fact, with just a little bit of planning, you can actually add color to the floor while the slab is being poured. Now, Wes is back to tell us how they accomplished that on this project. Wes, what did you do first? Well, the morning we were pouring the concrete, we actually added integral color into the truck and it mixes. And then while you're pouring the uh, slab, your color is through and through. And then we had the finishers put a hard trial finish on it so it would be a, a colored garage floor instead of a plane. So what did you do next? Well, we had our, <laughs> we had our hands full with this one. Uh, we had oh, paint, mortar, mud, debris, everything under the sun on this on this garage floor. We had to clean that up, thoroughly clean this, and the better you clean it, the better it's going to look when you put your sealer on. And then you did a process called burnishing? Yes. And what it is, is in between the coats, we took a high speed buffer and burnished, as you said, the floor. And what that does is it heats up the sealer and makes it even stronger um, so the uh, oil and everything else from the car and the tire marks and everything else uh, doesn't penetrate the concrete. Sounds like it's ideal for a garage. Thanks, Wes. I'm standing on George's office floor and I feel like I'm in an aquarium. George, what kind of planning went into having a floor like this? There's a lot of planning that went into this. I was in Las Vegas at a trade show and I met this guy named Rick Lobdell who was an artist who fell in love with concrete and decided to make that his career. And I told him, you know, I would love to have an aquarium on an office floor. And he goes, there's nothing I can't do with concrete. So I decided to take him up on it and we actually created a segment for him in the show. That's right. It's called the Lobdell Challenge and it's a special feature in our program that will truly test the limits of what can be done with concrete. Hi everyone. Welcome to the Lobdell Challenge. I'm Rick Lobdell, owner of ConcreteMystique.com and today's challenge, we have a client 
He wants to feel like he is sitting on top of an aquarium while working in his home office. Let's do it. As a concrete artist, just like any other artist, we need to make sure these floors are clean and prepped. That means every little detail from making sure the builder takes care of the floors, to picking up all of our debris, to making sure it's thoroughly mopped. Whatever it takes to make sure these floors take stain well is all that matters. Hello, I'm John Campbell. I'm here with Rick from Concrete Mystique. Uh, what we're doing now is uh, getting a layout of the floor, um, putting the puzzle pieces together. Uh, we have coral reef over here, a shark coming out of the water. Uh, we want to create a lot of depth and perspective. Um, the composition really does depend on where things are inside the room. If there's a desk, if there's a, a bookshelf, a table. And so we have to maintain the composition around these pieces. As an artist, I love using the SureShot Atomizer. With its repressurized system, it's able to do any look, any direction, any value, any color, all in one. I can change tips and I can just keep going. I don't have to worry about buying aerosol cans and wasting them over and over and over. I get it all in one. This Lobdell Challenge was a success. Not only do we have one happy homeowner, but we've left him a surprise. Because this floor, it's in 3D. That's our show for today from San Antonio, Texas. Now, whether building or remodeling, when you start to plan that next project, we hope you'll look at all the ways to use concrete. As you saw today, the possibilities are endless. I'm Ashley Camera. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.